So in episode one, Debish, a really solid shooter, woke up in what I think is one of the larger vaults. There was three other people hibernating away in crypto sleep. And from my testing, there was actually times where there was zero people in these caskets. So we did manage to get pretty lucky on that. At the end of the episode, I actually opened up this room. But after playing for it about an hour and opening up this door, plus there's another one down here that will lead to the outside, I realized that we're not prepared to deal with the raids that Void is going to send us. He sent us three negative events. It was one raid in a manhunting animal pack and those kind of countered out each other so we didn't really have to do much but this raid we had to deal with all on our own and we only had two turrets there's one outside it's a pretty big one and i was able to uninstall it and bring it inside but i feel like in order to have the best chance of beating this scenario we're going to stay in this vault as long as we can as long as our food supply holds out which we still got 300 packets of robin meals right here plus another 150 plus 20 and then down here we got a hydroponics basin which we're able to grow our own food in we just need to make a sun lamp in here and that does take a lot of power but we have this ancient geothermal plant over here which is going to supply that thing with a lot of power and yeah there's probably gonna be a lot of fast forward now i'm gonna do this episode because we're just gonna be doing research pretty much like we're gonna start out researching microelectronics which is gonna allow us to research auto cannon turret and we need that tech to unlock other turret techs i just don't know if we're gonna have enough materials to make turrets because we're pretty much stuck with what we have in the vault and we don't have a whole lot of materials right now like we got some ancient machinery down here that we can deconstruct it doesn't do anything this ancient monitor bank is a small set of old computer screens there's no way to interact with it so yeah we can just deconstruct that stuff and then also we can deconstruct these crypto sleep caskets. I was thinking that maybe we want to actually put some of our colonists back in crypto sleep and that could extend our food supply, but do keep in mind the longer we play, the harder the game gets, like difficulty just ramps up over time slowly. Plus there is also benefits to keeping these guys awake, like we can level them up over time. We have our druid just cast tailwind, which is the attack speed buff that gives more attack speed. That will give them a level up from using all that mana. Plus they also just gain XP over time as long as their mana is full, but I do think it is in your benefit to actually cast abilities. Also, Asigur has a really powerful buff, Shadow, which we need to level this up actually. And I think if we heal, we can actually level it up again. Yeah, we got another skill point, so we're gonna put another point in Shadow. And putting three points in this is gonna give everyone a negative eight mood decrease, but it will, whoa, we got an infestation a 3,000 threat point infestation. And we can actually prevent these if we light up every area. But uh, yeah, I forgot to do that. Uh, that's not good. Okay, well, I wanna move this turret cause I don't want it to get destroyed by the insects. We're just gonna have Ace Gear move that inside. And then we're gonna have CUT haul as much steel as she can. Okay, we're not gonna have much time at all to deal with this. Okay get inside. We're going to hold this door open and we're going to build an embrasure here and we can shoot through this. Somebody in the comments was very upset about the embrasure mod. The fact that you can shoot through walls they were saying was OP but uh, enemies can shoot back through it and I think the main difficulty with my mod pack is casters and they can cast abilities through it and a lot of casters can just like teleport over the embrasures so they don't really actually offer that much safety at least not as much as you would think I guess but yeah we're gonna man these embrasures and yeah here they come our problem right now is our ammo is limited so there's that and crap they're actually going for the gene tailoring pod well we're just gonna hope that there's another one of these in the other vaults and yeah the super nanites are done for it too by the looks of it. We weren't going to use them anyways, so it's not that big of a deal. I kind of wanted to save like the super nanite centrifuge and all these other buildings because they can increase the chance of this being successful. Crap, there was five super nanites inside of that too. There's not even that many insects in here, so it's not even like that big of a deal. It's mainly if we don't clear these hives out right away, then we're going to be getting just non-stop insects. Yeah, they're mainly pissed off because they can't get to us. What are they doing up here? Oh, they're trying to break through this vault wall, but yeah, there's no way. But yeah, I think we're okay here. Just open up this. We can allow them to have a way in, I think. And let's piss them off. We'll have Ace here use invisibility and then hopefully block this uh, door. Or block it. We can open that, I think, while they're invisible. Hopefully we can just take them out fast and basically just reduce the amount of damage that they're doing. I don't know how much longer the invisibility is going to last. They last for one hour. They last quite a long time. Yeah, they can't uh, hit Ace here because he's invis. It's kind of OP in a way. We could use this for raids too. We could use this tactic. I wasn't really sure if like projectiles could hit him. And maybe they still could. Like we're kind of technically shooting over his shoulder, I think. Yeah, it is kind of a bummer that we lost the gene tailoring pod, but do keep in mind other vaults might have that stuff. And there is a chance of death if you use that stuff, so we don't want to waste ammo on that. Stop shooting. But yeah, we got quite a good supply of insect jelly, so that'll help us with our food problems a bit. We did lose our scientific buildings in here. And then we lost 
nothing else really i think to fix that issue we're gonna build lights everywhere and i have a mod infestation spawn in darkness which makes it so infestations will not spawn in lighted areas so we're gonna have to build those everywhere because we're gonna be here a long time and i think void might send us more infestations if we don't light up everywhere like even these bedrooms because everything in here is under overhead mountain we're inside of a mountain type of deal. So yeah, everything needs to be lit up. Yeah, that is gonna cost a lot of steel. CUD and Joyce for the most part really have had nothing to do. Like I've just been using Tailwind with them every so often and he's gotten up to level three now, or it's a she. Oh, we got a disease, right as I was, uh... Oh, and we finished microelectronics. Okay, a lot of things are happening right now. So everyone does have a power and a weakness, and Ace Gear's weakness is they're sickly, so they become ill very often. Sensory mechanites is actually one of the better diseases. It increases pain, but also increases sight, hearing, talking, and manipulation. Although they do need to rest more, and the disease can progress, and these stats start increasing, but the pain starts increasing as well. So we do want to tend it and take care of that disease. Also, I just realized I've not been allowing these people to sit on stools while they research, which is not good, because doing that will increase their mood and we want to keep their moods really good because if they are always in good moods they can have inspirations or they're more likely to so far we haven't had any i don't think also i forgot to build a file cabinet which does increase research speed by five percent so yeah my bad on that one that's why i need you guys to be looking over my shoulder all the time much like the arcane shadow and uh i need the presence next to me assisting me in everything i do it knows what to do before i do hey that sounds like the comment section this whole time we could have also been having cut do research like yeah they're not that good at it with their one intellectual they only research at 26 percent speed and they do have no passions for it so they're gonna learn it very slow but still 26 percent more speed oh we got another whoa this is a really bad one that was two diseases back to back and paralytic abasia is terrible lasts for 36 days and they're paralyzed. This disease can be completely cured with glitteral medicine. Whoa, that's terrible. We don't have any of that. So this person just out for 36 days. Our druid class can learn cure disease and then we can give them disease knowledge, but I don't see paralytic abasia on here. I don't think that's something that you can cure with this cure disease ability. So I did a test with our druid, learned cure disease and ranked up everything. Like disease knowledge, got this up to rank three. Natural healing just reduced the mana cost, that doesn't matter. And effective treatment, I ranked this up to rank three. And we still cannot cure Ezgir of paralytic abasia. One thing I found out about the disease though is it only makes them unable to walk by interfering with the motor cortex. They're still conscious this entire time and like we're still getting the buff shadow to other people so we're getting our research bonuses and then the mood penalty as well but basically for the next 35 days Ezgir cannot use his legs however there is a mod that allows you to build a wheelchair. The only problem is that we have to build a machining table and then we have to build a wheelchair which is going to cost quite a bit of steel and a lot of our steel is now going to be used on building this high-tech research bench so we can research some of the higher tier techs and we can research a bit quicker. This is going to cost 250 steel and 10 components and we actually have tons of components. I don't know how we got 250 components. Like I think we got some from deconstructing some stuff and maybe from the insects destroying those uh, buildings we got a bunch of components. I don't really know but yeah we have a bunch of extra components. We don't really care about that too much and okay we finished the research bench and we're almost done with machining. That was actually the next tech we were researching. With machining research we can now build a machining table and we can make the wheelchair here. It's just that this is going to cost another 150 steel we just spent 250 on that research bench we're down to 109 i guess and yeah with 65 steel and two components we can now make a wheelchair which is only going to leave us with like 40 steel i don't know if this is worth but yeah with a mod we can dress asiger and we can put the wheelchair on him and now he's for some reason wheelchair was not on their list of things that they can wear but yeah i changed that now ace gear is actually walking around pretty quick with the wheelchair the wheelchair does lower manipulation by 20 percent, but at least he can now do stuff and the sensory mechanites are now mild so his manipulations increased so it kind of counters that out i guess same with shadow aura one thing i also forgot about is that we can butcher up these insects that we killed earlier for not only insect meat but we get bones from them as well and we can use bones to build stuff i'm not really sure what we're going to build with it yet we could have actually made a research bench out of bones we should bring this file cabinet down here and let's deconstruct this other one because we only have three people that can do research choice is actually incapable of doing research which kind of sucks because she's a fast learner so she learned intellectual really fast i also don't think we're going to be using these ancient crypto sleep sarcophaguses under the known issues apparently if you put someone back in these they can just disappear and that was a known issue on like day two release of the mod they might have fixed it by now but even if we could put people back in crypto sleep i don't think we care about doing that at this point so yeah we're going to deconstruct those i think we get like 100 steel each from those and then we got a bunch of just random crap 
crap that we're not using. Some of these beds actually that we uninstalled. We don't need this many end tables as well. We have a bunch of steel end tables that are doing nothing. And then do we really need six batteries? Like they are ancient ones and they cannot break down and they operate more efficiently during solar flares. So they're really good, but I think we'll actually probably find more of these in the other vaults. So I don't even know if we need any batteries really because this geothermal plant will never go out, I think. Another thing we can do to kind of min-max the amount of steel we have is we can deconstruct all the end tables and all of the beds for steel and we can make them out of bones. We have quite a bit of bones left, 519 still. I also wonder if we get steel from deconstructing these hermetic crates. Let's just do it. And I don't actually know what these reinforcer mechanites do. They are tuned to reinforce equipment. The mechanites reinforce and stabilize equipment without any risk. To use this material, a special device is needed. It's from the infinite reinforce mod, which is actually a new mod that I've been meaning to test. And with this mod, you can reinforce gear, which again is going to cost materials, but I think we should probably do it because we have six of these reinforcer mechanites that have value of 4,500. We want to get rid of that. So we open both those crates and we're going to now deconstruct them. We also got this mine suppressor, which basically you install into a prisoner and it will recruit them over time, but it makes them dumber. And I'm not sure if you can uninstall this. Probably something I'd have to test out. And okay, we get like no steel from that. I guess those hermetic crates are made of basically nothing. So in order to build an equipment reinforcer, you have to research microelectronics, which we did research. And this is actually kind of insanely scripted. You need 75 plasteel and we have 79 from, I think these buildings over here. I'm pretty sure that's how we got it. But yeah, we're going to plop one of these babies in our storage room. Oh, it looks like before we actually do that, it's been, I think, 10 days and people now want to have a mech hacker and an Arconic Priest. We're getting some negative moodlets for that. So we're actually going to do that role right now. The mech hacker will be Debish because they're our main fighter. And this is a new role introduced with the Vanilla Ideology DLC, which added a ton of new ideology memes. I think it more than doubled or maybe even tripled the amount of memes that are in the game. Or maybe I'm off on that one. I'm not really sure. I can't see a lot of the memes because I only play with the fluid ideology system which only allows you to choose the low and medium impact means at the very start and some people in the comments was also talking about how since we're mechanoid supremacy we should be not despising mechanoids but i think it's okay for us to think as mechanoids as like gods and they are our superiors but since they're trying to kill us then we despise them and even if it doesn't really make sense the only other option here was to make mechanoids like praise or something and it's like a negative 10 moodlet for killing a mechanoid that's all it gives so i didn't think that was like very good for gameplay basically and the idea basically is our faction is the ancient mechanos and we need to destroy all the mechanoids because they're too powerful and it actually says required precepts is mechanoids exalted but i was able to change this in the ideology creation screen which usually you're not able to go against this i think i'm not really sure but either way i did want to test out this meme and i didn't want to have to just give everyone a negative 10 moodlet just for no reason if we do end up killing a mechanoid and like our ability is that we can destroy a mechanoid, like enable self-destruct. It will command a mechanoid to self-destruct. Why would we have this ability and then also love mechanoids? If we had an option to maybe like take over mechanoids, then maybe it would make more sense. But yeah, we're only able to destroy them. Like why give a negative moodlet when we destroy them with our ability? We also need to give over the role of Arconic Priest, which I think is our moral guide. And I believe that person needs to be good at social, like they need to have good social impact. And no one here is good at social. Sayudi and Asigur are actually incapable of doing social. And Joyce has one, so I guess we'll make her our social person. The bish is already our mech hacker, so we can't make him our social person. But yeah, we'll let everyone do that role. And one thing I forgot to talk about is they made new animations, I think for every meme and like new music and stuff, which is kind of crazy. Like the amount of detail that goes into their DLC is just insane to me. And yeah, we're now going to use the equipment reinforcer. Okay, never mind on that actually. We cannot use it on our crypt rifle and it costs a ton of resources to give just a tiny amount stats to this excellent assault rifle it cost like 400 seal i think it was to give it six percent more damage like we cannot do that and see i reloaded to an auto save that i had before we built that thing we could have just deconstructed it but we would have lost some resources and we need to save all our steel right now so yeah we'll just call that kind of a limit test i didn't figure out a way to actually use these reinforced or mechanites something in the comment section of the mod was also having a problem using these so yeah i'm not sure what's going on with that we'll probably end up selling them though and we got to do that pretty soon after we open our gates because each one of them has a value of 4,500. So that's six times 4,500. That is a lot of wealth that those things are adding. But yeah, it's now day 11 and we've actually got quite a bit of tech research. Like we're not going to be here for nearly as long as I thought. We still have 300 meals. Like we shouldn't even have to eat any 
of this rice or any of the insect meat, I think we're going to be able to open our doors before it comes to that. I was kind of thinking though, before we do open our doors, maybe we start hacking this pipeline junction, which can give us chem fuel and we don't really need chem fuel necessarily. We can use it to make transport pods though. And I was actually thinking about transporting people to the next ancient vault. And then hopefully we can bring them back pretty much instantly if we build a pod ejector at the other vault. I think that's how that works. I've actually never used transport pods, but yeah, the chem fuel could help us with that. We also have these ancient fuel tanks, which we should just deconstruct these. They are going to give us just 60 chem fuel each, I guess. No steel, unfortunately. But yeah, I think we will have someone start hacking this pipeline junction. And doing this can give us an infestation. Or maybe actually now I think about it, we should research a tech to be able to make like incendiary launchers. And if we do get an infestation, we can just cook the insects alive. That might be a good way to deal with them. And actually, since we research machining, we can make an incendiary launcher. Plus we can make explosive ammo with just chem fuel. So let's make some of that just to be prepared. Oh, we got Blood Moon Rising. Hope this doesn't bug the game out. Because, yeah, we got the werewolf events, but there's no way into our base right now. So I don't think it's going to matter. But yeah, I do really like this event, though. And I found out you don't need to use the Blood Moon Storyteller in order to get it. If you go to the mod settings, you can enable it for all storytellers. Note that it will not occur on a cycle. Oh, and then you have to enable the Blood Moon Cycle for all storytellers as well. And we get it every roughly 10 days, it says, but I think we're on day 11. Also, I went down here and used classic settings. The event was nerfed, and I like the harder difficulty, though. It's not that hard to deal with if you just have a couple of shooters. Yeah, we're on day 11 is when the werewolf event spawns. Probably by day 22, I think it's going to be the next one. We'll be able to kind of show that off. But yeah, so we made the incendiary launcher and it's an excellent one, which isn't actually good. It's got really high value and I don't think it's going to like cause more fire or something. So yeah, we don't actually like the fact that it's excellent. Plus it also has a really weird enchant, which I don't think is going to matter. It deals extra blunt damage, but lower base damage. Yeah, we'll have Joyce equip that. Load it up with ammo. And I'm almost certain we're going to get an infestation from this thing. I would just guess, but I haven't tested or anything. We are almost done hacking it though, and Debish's hacking speed is 135%. And there we go, we actually got the chem fuel, I guess. We can open it. We got 250 chem fuel. We can hack it again in six days, 23 hours for, yeah, more chem fuel. That is a really good way to get chem fuel. We're at 725 chem fuel. Holy cow. Okay, one more thing I was going to do is try out Asegur's encase ability. And what I'm thinking is that if we learn this and drop it down, like just right here. We set everyone to mining as like their main priority. Oh, it looks like we're actually losing power. I guess that destroyed one of our power lines, which is not good. Could get infestation right now. We'll see you come over here and try to reconstruct this. Oh, we destroyed some of the floor though, which is not big of a deal, I guess. But yeah, we're actually getting chunks from this. We need some sandstone chunks. We got three of them. Oh, it didn't destroy the floor. Okay. We can now have Joyce use these chunks at a stone cutter table to make blocks out of them. We get 20 blocks for each chunk. So that's kind of a way we can just produce resources out of thin air. And there's a lot of things we can do with sandstone chunks. We can actually make castle walls, which are really powerful walls. 1400 HP. There's going to be people in the comment section saying that's OP. We can make castle wall embrasures that have 1120 HP. They do cost a lot of sandstone blocks though. 15 sandstone blocks for that. So is it balanced? You know, there's definitely people that are going to say no but it will take us quite a while to get enough sandstone blocks needed to make an actual embrasure system. But I guess that's something we can start working on. And okay, we're on day 16.6 .6 and we're finishing up the embrasure system. We need two more chunks, I guess, because we have 15 out of 20 blocks here and then we need 20 more for this one. Also, we built a few things with some of our steel. We made an ammo pack and a mini turret pack. And I'm not sure if those actually can be used with ranged shield belts, but we're gonna test this out. We can make a ranged shield belt with two components, 50 steel and 20 plasteel. And yeah, we made a bish this decorated ammo pack, which lowers range cooldown by I think this is 25% and yeah apparently it lowers the cooldown of all range weapons by 25% and then this mini turret pack will shoot at whatever we're shooting at from what I've seen it's not that accurate but it will just add a little bit of DPS but yeah we'll get Ace out here to use his ability and we just need two chunks here to complete the defensive embrasure system we got one and there's two Oh, we got like five by the looks of it. Okay, we got way more than we needed, but yeah, it looks like our defense is complete. As far as our embrasures, and let's see if this... Uh, oh, nice, we made a good one. That's not bad. The range shield belt does give a bit less protection than the melee one, but since it's good, we did get a pretty good amount of energy on it, and you can fire out of it, which is nice. We'll now have the biz try to put that on, and if he can put that on on top of his other accessories, then maybe it's actually worth it. Oh, uh, we can't put that on on top of the ammo pack. If I could choose, I'd probably prioritize the protection over the lowered range cooldown, but we'll just give the the shield 
code and then we'll just give Joyce the lowered cooldown. But yes, we're almost ready to go. And what I'm wondering now is like, do we need this mending station, for example, which can repair equipment, but I'm wondering if we'll be able to find one in another vault. It might be kind of risky to deconstruct that. I am thinking though, like we can deconstruct these super nanite injector pumps, which lower the injecting time required to give someone superpowers. And then these simulation drives reduce fail chance by 1%, which is not that much. And I'm thinking we might find these in other vaults. So I'm thinking we deconstruct these and they might give some really nice stuff. Like we could use, oh, we don't really need the components or the advanced component. We could use the plasteel though. I'd rather they just give us steel to be honest. Yeah, it looks like we just got some extra plasteel, which we can use for like doors and stuff. And actually if we have enough plasteel, we have 59 over here plus 13, 12, 24, 12. We could maybe make a plasteel turret. Yeah, we only need 30 plasteel to make a plasteel mini turret. And those are actually not that much tankier, 280 HP. It's not terrible though. 70 steel, three components, 30 plasteel. I think that's going to be worth. See, so yeah, let's make some plasteel turrets and let's plop them down over here. Let's see where that leaves us in terms of supplies when we're done with that. We're also going to have Joyce make her own mini turret pack. It's a normal quality one. Is that actually worse than the good one? 11 damage, 16% armor pen. The good one's 11 damage, 16% armor pen. That's kind of lame. Maybe if it was excellent, it'd be better quality because sometimes with weapons, if you increase the quality by like just one, you don't really notice the damage too much. But yeah, it looks like we're going to be able to have enough materials for these three turrets. In terms of plasteel, right? Yeah, we have 49 plasteel left over. And as far as the turrets that we researched, here's what we got. So the main thing is these shredder turrets are pretty good. They deal 21 damage with 32% armor pen and they're really good at short range. They only have 20 range, which is not that much. But yeah, we want to plop like two of these down over here, two of these down over here. And it would be nice to actually make them out of plasteel. The steel ones have 240 HP, whereas the plasteel ones have 670. So yeah, it'd be nice to get four plasteel ones. We just need 400 plasteel for that. And I just don't really see a way that we're going to get 400 plasteel. We do have ways to get more steel though. Like, do we really need this cooler, for example? Like, yes, it's very nice that we have a cooler, but we could find one of those in another vault, hopefully, and we could just make a regular one later. So I think we're gonna deconstruct that because I was looking at our meal supply. I think I went over our meals earlier and I said we had 300, but we have 93 over here as well. Also, we don't really need these batteries. Like we have this chem fuel generator that we can just plop down and that should prevent us from losing power ever. So yeah, let's uh, plop that down, deconstruct the batteries for some extra steel. And then what else do we really need? Not need like the cooking station is nice it only has a work speed factor of 80 percent though which is weird you can butcher at it and cook at it but the electric stove has a 100 percent work speed factor you just can't butcher at it so i think we're going to deconstruct that and then even like the research bench we don't really need that anymore at least not in our immediate future we also don't need two chem fuel power generators we have another one that we we're going to move down here we don't need both of them right now because this one's giving us 4,000 watts of power plus 6,800 like that is plenty of power we need the machining table as well. Like, have we made everything that we need? We kind of need to actually be able to make ammo, so we probably should keep that up. Still on the fence about the mending station. Do we need these crypto sleep suspenders? They help the body heal and slow down the degradation of wounds. Maybe we should keep those just in case they're like better than normal beds. Also, I think we'll just keep this pipeline junction up. Uh, apparently, we can deconstruct it, but I'm not sure what we get. And it does refill in one day, four hours. So that's kind of how much time has passed. We hacked it. What was it like five days ago? So that just kind of gives you an indicator of like you know how much time has passed. But yeah. We got three plasteel turrets plus this ancient security turret. The ancient one does 11 damage with 16% armor pen. It's actually the same stats as the mini turret pack. It just fires and burst shot counts of two though, and then I'm guessing it's more accurate. And it looks like they actually do the same damage as the plasteel mini turrets, which is kind of weird. You would think the ancient ones would just be better because ancients are just better people. But yeah, so we got 30 plasteel left, 465 steel, and pretty much unlimited components. 30 plasteel is going to be enough for one more plasteel mini turret if we want to do that. And then we got the big turret that we can mount over here. And we can actually make a shredder turret out of steel as well. It's going to probably get killed really early on because we have to put it kind of in the front. So before we open the outer doors, I decided to plant some psychoid leaves so we can make some psychite tea and that could help stabilize Joyce's mood mainly because she's always kind of on the verge of mental break and I did not want her to go on mental break while we were out doing our mission. Even in this hydroponics bay though, it felt like it was going to take at least a week. So I decided just to kind of YOLO it. In order to top out Joyce's mood, I had her eat some insect jelly, which was going to top out her recreation and she actually got food poisoning. There's a 2% chance so that's pretty unlucky. But yeah, it led to her going into major break. She went into tantrum and started beating on stuff, mainly walls. So it wasn't that big of a deal. We didn't lose anything. And after that, she went to catharsis for the next few days. So her mood was going to be fine and we were ready to leave. 
Ooh. Holy hell. Okay, I wasn't actually ready for this just yet, but yeah, we're now exposed to the outdoors. First thing we're gonna do is grab this turret and bring it inside. Looks like we can also deconstruct these broken turrets. I don't think there's anything we can do to like repair this the turret platform. I don't think there's anything we can do with that as well. But yeah, Debish is gonna bring that turret inside and then we're gonna have CUD come out here and Ace here as well needs to come out here. Everyone actually needs to come outside to get rid of their entombed underground debuff. And now I think about it, we're in a cave biome, so I'm not actually sure if we can build pod launchers and launch out of here. I don't know how these work. Like, I don't know how many pod launchers we need to make. Pod launcher can launch one transport pod. So we have to build a pod launcher for each person. So that means we're probably just gonna wanna launch Joyce and the Bish out of here. Although you need six construction to be able to build pod launchers and Joyce only has five. So we're actually gonna have to launch out Ace here as well in this stupid wheelchair or Sayudi. You can truck these barricades. Oh, and there's probably steel in this map as well. Like there's compacted seal over here. Yeah, let's start mining that. Joyce does have five construction, almost six. So maybe we could just launch her in the Bish. And then when we get to the new vault, we could just have her train up her construction a little bit. Like it won't be too hard. I should have probably definitely done this before we opened up our vault. But now that we're in this position, we kind of are on a time crunch. I really don't know if we're going to be able to build three pod launchers. Oh. A caravan from the Sacrilege Hunters is approaching. Hey you, we've been traveling for weeks now and we were hoping we could make a few days rest at your village. We won't trouble you of course, we just need to relax for a bit. It's been hard on the road. Sure we don't mind, you're welcome to stay a while. They give you a tired but beautiful smile, that's kind of you. Take a deep breath and her eyes glance over the village and beyond. It's a fantastic village, fades with the beautiful nature all around perfectly. How are you guys doing here? It's nice of you to say thanks, we put a lot of work into it so far. Hope to make it through the winter. I hope to make it through the next couple of days actually. I'm sure you'll be fine, we started building a settlement not far from here. Hopefully Jack runs out of booze soon so we can finally plan the rest of our buildings. Our constructors are anxious to get to work. Anyways, you should come by and visit us when we're done and give us a chance to repay you guys for your hospitality. We notice her start to relax and smile. Thanks, we'll be happy to come visit. What brings you guys here? Holy crap, that's a lot of dialogue. They come from another planet, but war killed their fiance and they fled to the ship and they made it out before the planet's core collapsed. They noticed ancient structures can be found all over the planet. Our thirst for knowledge drove us to settle here. We're not looking to repeat our mistakes. We were plagued by sickness and raised from various factions. Any advice you can give us? Our ship crashed here as well not long ago that's not actually true we crashed here like a long time ago i think right figuring out the same as you i guess you seem well equipped for the challenge though holy crap you managed to excavate a bunch of shrines already and found some incredible artifacts but mechs inside worry me things worked out fine i'm sure our faction will be able to help each other if we're interested yes we are interested and our relationship with them changed from zero to 75 they're gonna leave us a vanimetric power cell which we don't really need too much but yeah, so that was from Caravan Adventures. That was not from the Ancients mod. We can also trade with these guys. They have quite a few things, actually, by the looks of it. Will they buy any of our trash? Like, the Reinforcer Mechanites, they will buy, actually. They don't have much silver, but they do have, like, an advanced Android assembly kit that we could turn into an Android. Oddity fragments can be combined to a box containing a random oddity if we gather enough of them. Is for them enough, I wonder? Orb of the Eternal can be used to heal the worst health condition of a target. We do have some scars on people. We can sell them the Mind Suppressor as well. Oh, they have Spacer Ammo. This is perfect. And they have Glitter World. We could actually cure all they don't enough they only have seven i think we need 10 to cure the paralytic abasia but yeah if we get joyce out here she has a little bit better trade price so we're gonna try to get her out here before these guys can get away all right so we'll take the advanced android assembly kit which is very expensive but we have a lot of money 13k for these reinforcer mechanites plus actually 3k on top of that so these are worth 16k and that's with our terrible trade price let's grab the audi fragments and i'm not even gonna test this out i'm just gonna grab them maybe i should actually test it really fast just to see if like they actually do anything and maybe i'll do that i'll just test really fast to see if we can actually use them or not and all right so evidently we need five oddity fragments in order to make a random oddity weapon and we need to be able to build a fabrication bench to be able to make them at if we get eight then we can make a specific one i just kind of glance over them but from what i can see they're pretty cool we will grab four of these fragments and we should be able to find more from more exotic goods traders and you'll yeah, we'll grab the android assembly kits plus all this plasteel i'm pretty sure there's not enough glitter world to be able to cure the paralytic abasia but we'll grab it anyways and then yeah down here we'll grab all their spacer ammo all their industrial ammo too let's just dump this mind suppressor it's just adding to our wealth. Let's grab this Orb of the Eternal so we can heal a Scar. It's just going to heal one of them so it's not super crazy good. And this map will unlock a location on the world map and you can't actually use two at once I think. So we'll just buy one of those and yeah we don't need to sell off all these Reinforcer Mechanites. We'll be able to keep two and we can even buy some more stuff. Just buy one of their advanced components I guess. And already I think while these guys are just chilling here I'm not sure how long they're going to be here but I think we'll use this opportunity to dip out of here before Void tries to mess us up. When the Bish actually needs to grab Spacer Ammo. Yeah we didn't grab that. Okay, while Dibish is grabbing the spacer ammo, we'll have Sayudi and Joyce load up these transport pods. 
And yeah, I had to launch them all individually. So I'm not sure if this is going to like bug things out. Hopefully not. There's a way to launch them all as a group, but it wasn't letting me load everything into the launch group or whatever. Is this going to bug things out? Mm. Holy hell. What the hell? We just recruited a bunch of people. These people are supposed to be defending against us. They're not supposed to just join us, I think. So I thought for sure this was some kind of bug and these guys would be hostile and they'd be trying to defend their vault against us. But it turns out it's actually intended. I found this out after reloading save and attacking the vault again. And this time there was no one here, but that's because when you reload save, you can kind of bug map generation sometimes. And before doing an event like this or attacking the enemy settlement, you have to completely close out of the game, then restart the game, then reload your save. And yeah, after doing a bit of digging, the mod creator actually said that it's intended for these people to join you when you visit their vault. Originally I thought you had to have the isolationist meme but as long as you use the starting scenario sealed vault then other ancients will join you. And I was going to start with this meme but since I'm doing a fluid ideologion I couldn't start with it because it's a high impact meme. And with fluid ideologion that you can add memes to over time you can only start with lower medium impact memes. These five ancients that joined us also have human primacy so they get a production specialist which is pretty nice. And then transhumanist unlocks a research specialist role which makes us do research quicker. And this is now our main ideology which I'm not sure there's much we can do about it so we're still gonna have four people that are following our old ideology but since we have five new people that are following our new one then now our primary ideology has changed and yeah originally I wasn't sure how I felt about this whole thing but I had some time to think about it and I think we're just gonna roll with it because it's part of the base scenario and do keep in mind just by adding more people it's not gonna make the game easier in fact it's actually gonna add a lot more difficulty the question is are these people actually worth the added difficulty so I'm seeing that there's a couple cats this person's a spell thief and they have a bunch of abilities that may or may not be super useful. They can copy a random ability from a major fighter though, like maybe heal and we can just spam that maybe if we can use stamina with that or maybe we'll have to use men, I'm not sure. Other than that though, they don't seem especially good because spell thieves a melee class and they don't have much melee and their other traits don't seem super crazy good and they don't really have anything that we need necessarily. Being that they are a caster though, we're gonna have to add 50% threat scale plus we have two more casters in this group and so with each caster increasing our threat scale by 50 50, that's going to bring our threat scale up to 750%. Plus we have all this added value from adding more people to our colony. And like, yeah, I don't know if they're going to be that good. Like Jackal is a support specialist, which does lower her aiming time, but it also does lower her shooting accuracy. So I guess we give her like grenades and she'll be able to toss like stun grenades. She's a tycoon though, which increases trade price and she does have eight social. So that's nice. Also, I guess if we give her a shotgun, I think it is, she can use some of these abilities like flashpoint shells, which can stun a target. And this dude, Ino Sordo, actually actually has a sawed off so we'll give that over to her. Yeah so we went over Kruka the spell thief, Jackal the support specialist. We also got Armadillo who just seems like he sucks kind of overall. He's going to verbally harass people while they build which is going to lower their recreation I think really fast and overall this guy doesn't have any traits that we need necessarily. He does have nine melee though so I think we'll just kind of use him as a meat shield. If he dies early then that's completely fine. Eno Sroto is actually magically gifted so we could eventually turn him into a caster. Quick learner increases learning rates and he can do research and mining. Dude's also a tier 3 robot, which is basically like a normal human. I think tier 3 robots get a little bit more HP, like he has 28 on his head. And then tier 3 robots also get 40% built in armor. So yeah, he'll be pretty solid. And then Dokenoba is an oracle class, and this is another support. So we got how many supports is that? Like 4? He gets increased shooting accuracy, but increased aiming time. So I don't know how good that's going to be. We got some more abilities, like we can curse an enemy with bad luck. And then divination can randomly give a target buffs, but I don't think we're going to use any of those abilities. I think we're just going to turn horoscope on auto cast and we'll give a nearby target a random buff and yeah we're just gonna make it simple by just auto casting that this person also could be pretty useful around base as they are a perfectionist it does lower the global work speed as does oracle that also lowers the global work speed by their 15 and they're slow learners so they learn extremely slow but this does actually increase their global work speed slightly being that they're perfectionists though they could craft for us and they can make better quality stuff so yeah i think we'll just have this person be our full-time crafter jackal is going to be our new full-time social person armadillo is going to be our meat shield and so yeah overall i don't think we care too much about these guys surviving in fact we want a few of them to die because we want our id legion to be the primary one so we can choose our other memes and they wanted someone to be their priest i think it was so we did that ritual and that is it gonna help their mood and mainly i just don't want anyone to have a mental breakdown we just want to get in and out of here as quickly as we can so i'm just having everyone try to hack as many doors as we can as quickly as possible so we got another large hermetic crate with a 
Persona Charge Lance, that's Masterwork, which is kind of crazy. Plus, we also have a Masterwork Architect Spine in this other crate. And here's the stats on this thing. Since this Persona does more damage and it gets more accuracy, I believe Masterwork definitely gives it more accuracy. And yeah, it's pretty nuts. As far as his traits are actually good, Fast Mover increases movement by 15%. Yeah, the damage and the armor panel on this thing is nuts. Plus, also has a Crippling Enchant, which gives a 10% chance to slow, 5% chance to blind the target. I think we give it over to Joyce, who's our other shooter. I don't think any of these guys are going to be as good at shooting as Joyce because she gets 50% less aiming time. So we're stripping down the rest of this base and hacking these doors. There's still three left to hack. Plus we're hacking this broadcast station, which is going to give us a quest to another lock vault. And there will be probably more ancients there, I would guess. Although maybe we just got lucky with the amount of people that were here. Maybe there won't be as many in the new vault. I'm not really sure, but we have 26 days to do that. Meanwhile, back at our main base, we got raided by a 1100 threat point raid. And we're going to have to have Ace of Gear just solo to defend this. It's good we left someone here because yeah the raiders will have someone to go for. Right now he's assembling this advanced android assembly kit which we did get from the trader on this dude is actually going to make it past the initial turret fire. They are Herculean though which increases their armor and I was actually going to make it so god traits don't give increased armor but then I was going to lower their value slightly. I think that might um, balance them out. And yeah, holy cow, that person actually made it through. That's nuts. But this android we assembled has three melee. We're just going to have it kind of tank for us, I think. I guess we should have it put on gear before we do. And is just going to have to solo, for now at least. We're going to have him fly over to this gap, and then we're going to have him use invisibility. There we go. And that person's dead. Very nice. And yeah, these guys are going to have to... Wait, Sylvester needs to open up this door, so they have a way to Sylvester. A nice Aesir in his wheelchair is just doing work. He's holding the line like a beast. He's disarming people because uh, he's a martial artist, so he disarms people in melee. He's got invisibility for one more hour. It lasts for an hour, so it actually can't be an hour still. But yeah, are these guys... Oh, okay, they're running. Phew. Nice job, Aesir. Dude's a freaking beast in the wheelchair. And yeah, I think before our next raid, I will do the nerf to the god traits to make it so they don't give armor anymore. I think that would just kind of simplify them a little bit because it's hard to kind of calculate like how much damage things are going to do to people that have built in armor. But yeah, meanwhile, at this other base, we ended up hacking the fuel room, which looks just like our fuel room. We could have hacked this pipeline junction as well, but I don't really see a need to. I think we'll have enough chem fuel to make it back home if we just deconstruct these fuel tanks. And yeah, we just want to make it back home as quickly as we can so we can start testing these super nanites on some of these ancients that joined us. I think that's what we're going to do, especially on the more useless ones. And speaking of powers, I forgot that these five ancients actually have their own superpowers. Kruka looks kind of weird, and I was wondering what's up with her face. Like, if you look at her face, it just looks kind of weird. I think, like, she's got this black thing on her nose and then I'm not sure what's going on with her forehead like it just looks kind of off. It says she's practically a zombie when her bodily and mental functions cease the body enters suspended animation. Over the course of three days her body will recover from any grave wounds and forcibly resurrect with the majority of the wounds remaining. But then it says the effect this pawn cannot die and as long as the body exists a few moments after dying the pawn will spring back to life with no wounds at all. So one of those is not true. Also she's extremely flammable. She's got 400% flammability so let's keep her away from anything fire related. And yeah, that was our spell thief. Now let's go to our support specialist. She has blast resist. She takes no damage from explosions. That's the same as Debish, actually. Debish also has that. Her weakness is she's heat intolerant as her max temperature is reduced by 10 degrees. That's not that bad. 10 degrees Celsius, though, 18 Fahrenheit. So her max temp is 103. That's still pretty hot. I guess her defender power armor is giving her more insulation to heat. And yeah, she came with this. This armor is really good. It gives 60% shield and covers everything that's not the head with 180 percent armor and then give some extra 10 quality and 10 speed so we'll give this over to our medic if they are a fighter which i think it's the bish and they are a fighter yeah the bish does have 10 medical so we'll end up giving that over to them that'll be a really good power armor for them and then Jackal will lose some heat resist though. As far as our Oracle support guy, he does have the power to psychically overload an animal's hormone production, convincing them that they are a member of this species. When cast on a man the animal, it calms it. When cast on a wild animal, tame it. I wonder if there's like a chance or it'll just straight up join us. That'd be crazy if it would just straight up join us. His weakness though is when he kills someone, there's a 50% chance for him to go berserk. He's basically addicted to killing. So yeah, we're going to keep him away from killing things. He does have nine shooting though, but Oracle does increase 
increased his aiming time, so actually he would not have been as good as shooting. I think if we just give him like non-lethal grenades, like flash grenades, then that would be fine. Or we can just keep him away from the fighting, like he still does have a heal, so he'll be useful and he's a perfectionist, so he'll be crafting and healing and stuff. As far as Armadillo, they actually have two superpowers and two weaknesses, which hopefully they're not that good because this person was one that we wanted just to have get killed because their skills and their traits are just not good. Their superpower is they can do metamorphosis, but they can actually turn into a turtle and a warg, I guess. The same stats as a turtle and warg. Now if we put them in combat, we can see metamorphosis turtle and metamorphosis warg. Don't know why we'd ever want to turn them into a turtle. I guess turtles are hard to hit. And they have another ability down here, empathy, which I guess is their superpower. They can give an ally a strong mood buff lasting 24 hours. It has a cooldown of 24 hours, but yeah, that's their other superpower. Now for their weaknesses though, they're paranoid. They will only ever feel safe when they're inside what they consider home. Pfft, that's fine. They're unsure, which increases their aiming time, but they can't shoot, so... Yeah, that's completely fine. We could actually use empathy on someone right now, like Dokinoba is in mental break. So moments after our last raid, we got raided on day 23.2. I don't know what this thing's doing in here. It's now day 24 and we're getting raided. So yeah, it's been like less than a day. I'm not sure what these guys are doing over here and like why they're not going for our base. I'm trying to knock down the vault walls, which have tons of HP. Oh, and this uh, Spielipede's trying to eat our meals. They actually did eat a meal, I think. I'm a bit confused here as to why they're not coming in, because they have a way to get to people. We're gonna have Sylvester come out here and uh, see if we can draw their aggro a little bit, maybe? Melee attack this person. There we go. That should do it. Maybe. It says these raiders are unusually clever with their tactics. They'll avoid our turrets, fields of fire, and notice some of our traps. Let's move us what they're doing here. I'm not really sure. Either way, we're gonna have Aesir come outside. Actually, let's grab one of these weapons on the ground. Like this scrap spear seems like a pretty good weapon. So I'm gonna grab that and we'll have them go in Viz. And then we'll just go to town on these dudes. Or not. This dude's running. Let's get this person. Disarm them in combat. That's good. Disarm anyone else before we lose our invis. Still got it for one hour. We'll have a bit of a warning. Maybe take out this guy's grenade launcher. Nice. Maybe grab the grenade launcher. Oh, it's bio-coded. Never mind. Let's keep attacking this person, I guess. Still got invisibility going on. I just don't know what the heck's going on with these guys. They're not sappers. Just wounding people, so that's good. Take out this guy's sniper, I guess. Hopefully disarm him. So I've gotten biz for another hour. For zero hours now, actually. So it's probably gonna run out pretty soon. This person's bleeding. Holly is bleeding as well. Got a stab in their tailbone. Maybe another hit on Andre. Killed Andre, nice. Viz is gonna run out pretty soon, I'm guessing. 10 seconds, yeah. Maybe get inside. Yeah, let's just get out of the line of fire. What are our walls doing over here? 91%. And then 91%. Yeah, we don't want them to destroy our walls, like, for sure. Let's have Sylvester grab one of these Iquas, and then we'll come out and start mailing these guys down, I guess. Like, this is very weird. I did just reload, like, as these guys were raiding us, because I disabled the God Traits armor. So maybe that's why these guys are behaving this way. Get out of the line of sight. I'm so confused. Like, there's a way in the base. Guys, get in. Yeah, God Traits no longer give armor. So there's that. And what the heck is going on with these guys? Have a secret come outside. Let's see if we can get a shot off on these guys. Don't want to say. Oh, can they come for us? Looks like they're coming for us. Maybe they're just behaving this way because they want to avoid our turrets line of fire, like they said. I don't usually play with turrets, so yeah, I'm guessing that's what's going on here. Like they do not want to run into our turrets because they're not going to this door. Well, it looks like we're gonna have to take him out the old-fashioned way. Is Aesir's and Viz back up? Yeah, it is. It's only got a cooldown of three hours, so... So I'm going Viz, and then just take the rest of these guys out. Surprised they're not running, actually, yet, because we've killed... Oh, there we go. Knock this guy out. They are physically adept, and they're a martial artist. We could turn them into a fighter. We did cut off their ear and their right big toe, but that's not that big of a deal. Meanwhile, back at this new vault, we've almost finished constructing all of our transport pods. If we make these three extra pod launchers with 
transport pods in them we can pretty much launch everything for the most part we're just not gonna have enough chem fuel to make it back home we ran out and we don't have enough for this one and this one which we could actually lower the amount of chem fuel in the other pods we can lower it down to like max distance of 25 tiles i could actually calculate this out but i was thinking we just have to bish hack this pipeline junction which she kind of just started doing and she's already got a lot of progress on that so i don't know if it'd actually be faster to lower the amount of fuel in these pods and already we loaded everything we could i guess into these transport pods we were not able to bring the simulation drive i guess and this is the stuff we're leaving i'm not seeing anything important we opened both these hermetic crates as well so there's nothing inside those and yeah i think we're pretty good to go we could have deconstructed this geothermal plant but i don't think it would have given us anything too important and yeah we were not even able to bring a lot of this medicine and these meals for some reason we were able to get the rest of them for some reason someone just decided to drop this before getting into the pods and there was no way to go out and grab it so yep that's pretty much it for that tile that actually is it for that tile it's completely gone off the map now and we're heading back home and here we go everyone has made it safely by the looks of it and holy cow our wealth is 230k now everyone's gonna seize bodies i meant to uh clean this up robot what are you doing man so the last raid was on day 23.6 and i'm actually pretty glad that void sent us two raids in a period of like less than a day it has not sent us a single event after that because yeah as you can see our wealth just skyrocketed we're up to 215k wealth now on this map and i kind of do want to dump it using a mod that i've used in the past which can call trade ships and i'm not sure if that's really going against the spirit of like this run because it can be kind of op in a sense that we can call trade ships for like steel plasteel and stuff like that and we can trade off like any garbage that we have like we have tons of extra medicine and we probably don't need 600 meals we have 471 components we can dump all that stuff if we want do keep in mind though we are playing on 750 percent threat skill and i think for that reason plus the fact we're playing with void i think using that mod should be okay you can't use rim deed right now so maybe we won't use that i kind of do want to see who they got though sometimes this mod will bug out and they won't have anyone and yeah they don't actually have anyone we could just dump these guys off to rim deed some of the people that we don't want some of the extra ancients that aren't super useful although i did find out that we can kind of coexist with them we can build their religious buildings and do their rituals at their buildings and do our rituals at ours like this is their religious building this is our religious building and we can kind of coexist maybe i will say it's not letting us choose a production specialist which kind of sucks i want to turn this perfectionist guy into a production specialist and doing this will increase his crafting speed and it will give plus one quality to his crafting or construction and yeah here's the role manufacturer but it's only available if we put one of our people over here not one of theirs like we can't choose a new role maybe we need to select a monk first but we've already selected a monk though jackal is the monk and yeah i decided that we are in fact going to be able to use orbital traders and we called in a hoarder trader who will buy our excess junk that we're not using mainly all these weapons we don't really care about and then up here we got 375 medicine we're gonna sell like 300 of it plus like how many packets survival meals do we really need let's sell like 200 and that's gonna be all their silver. Now we'll call in a Bookets Trader so we can hopefully buy some Plasteel. Yeah, they have 230 Plasteel, we'll buy all of that and then all their steel. And we'll try to mainly make turrets out of that. This trader also has some animals. It has six cats that it will sell us. Just buy all those cats and then these Skip Hounds also can nuzzle people. We'll buy a female and a male. I'm watching the Skip Hounds and they're just kind of skipping around randomly. It's kind of annoying. So yeah, there it goes. I'm just going to slaughter these things. We're going to do it before someone has a chance to bond with them. And yeah, we can make kibble out of those things for our kitties. These cats will be eating kibble made out of dog meat. So you know how earlier we found out that Kruka has self-resurrection? I wonder if we can just give her powers and if this does fail and if she were to die, if she'll resurrect. So let's actually test it out. There's a 45% chance of failure because we have five simulation drives, one centrifuge, and one dialyzer, which is helping, but we could get more of this stuff if we explore other vaults, which we will do. We still have 22 days to do it, so there's no rush. But yeah, so Kruka is now going to be in here for five days. These operations take a while. So the last raid we got was on day 23.37. We got an infested ship module crash on day 26.9, which is not bad. It's this thing in the northwest corner of our base, and if we attack it, then insects will spawn out of it but raiders will aggro on these insects from what i remember so it can kind of help us out finally void sending us another raid on day 29.1 it's a drop pod raid and they are attacking immediately but before they do attack us we can accept this quest the deserter which will make this person join us tobos and we'll get two selling neuroformers but we'll piss off the empire but we've already pissed off the empire since we're ancients i think we're at war with them no matter what and so yeah they're gonna raid us with all this stuff and we're gonna hope that this force attacking us is gonna be hostile with the empire 
Empire, or we're gonna have to deal with two raids at once, so it is kind of a gamble. If I want to be super try hard here, I could actually check to see if they're at war with each other. Yeah, we should probably do that because it's a 2600 threat point raid. And yeah, I went to the faction menu, and with a little bit of digging, I did find the Empire here, and they are at war with Heliosans, which is the faction that's raiding us right now. So we're gonna telephone Roslo Tobos, who has been on the run for like four days now, I think. And we're finally gonna let him in our base, and we're gonna hope that they don't come in from a bad side which it looks like they're coming in from an okay side i think yeah because the drop pod raid is right over here so they should be able to get to our base fine as for this person's stats they don't seem exceptionally good they are a wander but they don't start with any abilities i don't know why our wander started with so many oh, wait maybe i need to unpause oh, okay there we go so they start with flights rainmaker and firebolt i guess all wanderers get the same abilities now to choose from and they could actually just fly into our base if we wanted to Flight has a really long range. Yeah, they could just fly into our base. Might as well just do that just to make things simpler. So they're coming in and we did close our doors. Oh, I think their empire is actually here. Perfect timing. Right on time, boys. 2,500 threat point raid from the empire. So I think these guys are gonna have no chance. They're gonna start beating on our walls, but we got the vault walls going on and we do not care about any of this shenanigans because we are locked inside our walls. While they're doing this, I'm gonna carefully make an area so that people are stuck inside because I wanna come out and reinforce our walls a little bit. So yeah, I'm just gonna finish off doing this. And yeah, we're gonna send our builder out here to try to reinforce mainly the door. Like it's just a sandstone door, which has 225 HP. We have a couple of castle walls, which have 1400. If they go for the door, then they'd be able to break in, but they're evidently too stupid to do that. So yeah, they're just going to be uh, fighting the empire by the looks of it, which is great for us. Some of these empire guys actually might have some really good stuff. Like I'm seeing, some really decent weapons like uh, Zeus Hammer. It's bio coated though. I'm sure, a lot of these weapons are. Let's see, it's not bio coated. But yeah, let's see if they're. Uh, well, I gotta actually watch this over here just to make sure they don't break through the sandstone door. All right, we got the plasteel door up and running, so we should be okay here. These guys are not helping their friends out. It's like a game of League of Legends, and they're split pushing, I guess, I'm trying to get some farm over here. But there's not really any farm to get over here, boys. You should probably be helping your team out. Do keep in mind a lot of these check, though they do have lower tier stuff. They do have built in armor. Oh, and it looks like the Imperials are fleeing. They do not care about rescuing. Oh, that sucks actually. This person went down, but then they got killed to like a random projectile or something. Oh, and somebody dropped their plasma saw. This is a really good melee weapon. Does tons of damage. Doesn't have much armor pen, but it can set people on fire. It's a really cool weapon. I wouldn't be surprised if it actually is not flammable as well. There's a flame going on out here, but it would be nice if uh, it was not flammable. And yeah, are these guys going to keep beating on our walls? I'm going to have to test out our new defense system. I'm not sure what's going to happen with this whole thing. We'll just test it out on these guys, I guess. Because yeah, I want that plasma saw. It's gonna burn. Yeah, it is burning actually, by the looks of it. I think it's on fire. We're gonna send Aesir, our wheelchair wander out here, and he's flying. Look at him go. And then immediately once he lands, we're gonna have him use invisibility, and he's cloaked up. Now we're gonna have him pick up the plasma saw. Or he can't equip it because it's burning. We'll just have him try to pick it up, I guess. I guess he can pick it up even though it's burning. And yeah, we'll have him now equip it, and the only problem is now he's kind of stuck out here, so he has to get back inside before the invis wears off, or he's not in the best spots, and there's still a lot of these dudes. We're gonna have Sylvester come out here and open up these doors, and you guys get inside. Hold the doors open, and run, boys. Sylvester is gonna, oh man, I think they're gonna come in, even though they did say they're gonna avoid our turret's field of fire, so there's that. They might actually just not come in. In fact, I'm kind of thinking that's going to be the case. We might have to send some people out here to take them out. Or er, wait. There we go. Oh yeah. So these turrets are made out of plasteel. Looks like uh, Ace here, are you going to be able, be able to make it back in? Oh, he's kind of stuck. There's fire over here. Can you just get past these dudes? Take out the plasma saw, just start. There we go. Start mailing the dudes down. Oh, we don't want you guys to get hit. The bitch just man the side. Aesir still has one hour left of invis, so that's good. I'm just gonna let him just start chainsawing people down in his wheelchair. The wheelchair warrior. They're trying to heal each other. They don't know where the chainsaw is coming from. Okay, what are you doing? Why are you out here? I messed up on that one. They only got a gunshot, but I think they're about to get blasted. We can hold these turrets fire for a second. Try this guy run. Uh, yeah, everyone needs to not come in this door, actually. Yeah, Aesir actually is, is about to run out. He might be screwed here. 
the old wheelchair warrior misogynist. We got a quest. Oh, and this guy actually went down. We turned the turrets back on at least. Oh no, a lot of our turrets in here actually held fire. Yeah, I forgot we held fire because I was exterminating some bugs basically without going too much in detail. But yeah, we're good now on that. I think Aesir might be in a really bad spot. Like, he might actually be screwed here. I'm not really sure. Like, uh, hopefully they'll start running in a second, but he's got Invis for six more seconds and he's gonna be just getting lit up after that runs out. Somebody's gonna be- oh, they're actually running. That's really good. He's gonna start getting shot at, but they can't use abilities on him at least. And abilities are some of the worst things that, uh, enemies can do. He's, uh, not dead, but he's knocked out. Let's use a Rainmaker on our other Wanderer. So it's going to start raining and we can put the fire out. And there are abilities where like you can retrieve people. We just don't have any of that stuff right now. So we just got to kind of wait for these guys to back off. We could actually send out the Bish because the Bish has two shields actually. One range shield belt and then one shield on the power armor. This person's knocked out. Are they any good? They are tough, but aside from that, they don't really care about combat. This person's a scrapper class, which actually takes a lowered incoming damage by 50%. That's a really good class. We would like to capture them if we can. We'll send out the Bish to try to arrest them, and meanwhile, we cannot rescue Asker because we have no beds, apparently. Oh, I forgot to unallow this door. Okay, yeah, we're good. Never mind. Yeah, if we can uh, rescue him or arrest him before his hypothermia wears off, that'd be ideal. Can we arrest him. Yes, we did. Very nice. This could be a really good tank. Also got 13 social and he's an animal lover. We do have a bunch of animals around our base. So yeah, we'll capture this dude. So in the middle of that whole raid, we got probably the worst event you can get. There's a nearby psychic droner that's giving us a high psychic drone, which is normally a negative 30 mood, but in my infinite wisdom, I made it so Artemis is blessing the god trait, essentially double psychic sensitivity. So Joyce and the Bish are now going to have a negative 60 mood until we clear that thing out or we move our base and we could actually just pack everything up and head over to this other nearby vault and that'll be outside of the reach of the psychic droner which we're not gonna be able to take out because joyce and debish our best fighters are gonna have mental breakdown on the way there and it's guarded by 63 like really high tier dudes we don't have any like explosive weapons or anything like there's just no way we can take out 63 dudes if we can't make it out of our vault this could definitely be the end and so yeah the next episode might be one of those like two minute finale episodes we'll see how this whole thing goes and with that i want to thank you all for watching and i'll see you in the next one